Chicos, hola chicas, bienvenidos a un nuevo vídeo de GCC Sacapuntas Spanish. Now, today we are going to learn five amazing ways to talk about something that you've done in the past. Now, using the past in Spanish is probably one of the most common source of stress and also where the students in GCC make the most of the mistakes. So, With this video, you are going to learn, revise, and consolidate an amazing five ways to keep talking about something that you've done in the past without conjugating, without changing the ending of the verb, without even thinking about that. You are going to talk fluently, accurately, and also with a lot of confidence using these five ways to talk about the past in Spanish. Let's do it. say no conjugation, I say using the past without conjugation, what actually means? Well, in Spanish, normal Spanish, native speakers, they will use the traditional, the normal way to talk about the past in Spanish, which is conjugating. That's it. Changing the ending of the verb and putting another letter instead. For example, estudiar, the verbs ending in AR, estudiar, means to study. If you want to talk about the I studied yesterday, what you have to do is the AR, you take it off and you put an E with the accent. Estudié ayer. And that is very, very quick, um, the normal way to talk about the past. What happens is in Spanish, like other Latin based languages, if the verb ends in ER or IR, it's just slightly different. Instead of an E with that accent, you put an I. For example, comer means to eat. I ate yesterday is comí ayer. You remove the ER, you put an I with that accent. The problem with this is that sometimes you have to keep thinking about if the verb is an AR verb or is an ER or IR. And also there are some irregular verbs that don't follow this pattern. Just one example. Tener means to have, but tuve means I had. So there are regular, irregulars, AR verbs, ER verbs, IR verbs. That sometimes is a little bit complicated when you have to speak and when you have to react really quickly to a question from your teacher. Today, we are not going to change the verb. We are not going to change estudiar, comer, Jugar, tocar, we don't change that. We are going to put something before. <música> Fui a, I went to. Fui a jugar al fútbol al parque. I went to play football to the park. Fui a. This is a good way, an amazing way as well, to talk about something that you've done in the past. If you add mos to fui, like fui mos, means we went. Mos is the ending that means when we talk about a group of people in Spanish. So you will see mos in many verbs when we talk about we. We are doing something or we did something. So fui a jugar means I went to play. Fuimos a jugar al fútbol. We went to play. Fui a and fuimos a. Decidí. Decidí tocar la guitarra ayer. I decided to play the guitar yesterday. Decidí. This another way to talk about the past without changing the tocar after decidí. If, again, like fui and fuimos, if you add most to decidí, that means that we decided to do something. So we, you are with your family during the weekend, during the last weekend, and you decided to uh, play basketball in the park. Decidimos 
jugar al baloncesto en el parque. Decidí and decidimos. That's the second way. Me animé a. I love this one because we use this a lot in Spanish. Anime come from animarse. Animarse, as you can see, means when you. Hello, how are you? Well, that's my cat. Very good way to remember. Me animé a means I decided. Me animé. Anime sounds like uh, and looks like anime. The Japanese uh, cartoon or Japanese media. They actually the word come from animation in English. So you need to imagine that you decided to watch an uh, anime uh, cartoon or anime movie. Me animé a ver una película de anime. So, me animé a, I decided to. Pude. Pude, but actually, is similar to pudding. Pude. Pudding. Now, it doesn't mean pudding. Pude means I could or I was able to do something. I managed to do something. Pude come from poder. And poder, as you can see, means I to be able to do something. And the past is pude when you talk about yourself. So if you put pude before any verb ending R, it's like you managed, you were able to do the activity. Pude tocar el violín ayer. Pude jugar al balonmano ayer. Pude poner música ayer. And why not? If it's similar to pudding, you can remember as I pude comer pudding. I managed or I was able to eat pudding. Pude. I was able to. Tuve la suerte de. Literally, I had the luck to do something. Or I was lucky to do something, you would say in English. Tuve la suerte de. Tuve la suerte de poner mi música favorita ayer en casa. Tuve la suerte de tocar la batería. Tuve la suerte de jugar al voleibol. Tuve la suerte de. And then any verb. In this way, you are expressing something a little bit more complex than using fui a o decidí. On the other ones. <laughs>